Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we're going to be looking at different types of diffusion. So this should be a review lesson for us, but all the same, let's make sure we're familiar with these concepts. We begin with diffusion, which is the process of spreading a feature or trend from one place to another over time. It has been estimated that no more than 10% of the cultural artifacts of any society are traceable to innovations created by its members. And that means that the other 90% come to the society through diffusion. But there are different ways that a feature or trend can spread from one place to another over time. There are two major types of diffusion, relocation diffusion and expansion diffusion. And within expansion diffusion, we can be more specific in terms of how it expands. It can expand through contagious diffusion, hierarchical diffusion, and stimulus diffusion. So let's look at each of these in turn and provide several examples associated with cultural diffusion. We'll start with relocation diffusion. This is the spread of a feature or a trend through bodily movement of people from one place to another. So when people migrate, they bring their culture with them. So we can look at where religions are practiced. Notice the diffusion of Buddhism, Christianity, and Islam. We see where they began, their hearths. But missionaries brought their religion to new people through conquest and colonization. Foreign countries brought their religion to new places. That is relocation diffusion. And when people migrate, they bring their language too. So when refugees from the Vietnam War migrated to the United States, they brought their language with them as well. As part of the Chinese diaspora, we saw the diffusion of Mandarin Chinese to areas like the West Coast of the United States. But we also saw the diffusion of other cultural traits, like the use of chopsticks that were introduced to new areas. And the same goes for other material culture traits. We saw new clothing styles and books and restaurants and architectural styles. With migrations from Europe, small ethnic enclaves developed, like Little Italy on the East Coast in major urban areas. And with these migrants came food, like pizza, which came to the United States in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. But relocation diffusion doesn't exist in a vacuum. After Italians brought pizza through relocation diffusion, it began to expand. So expansion diffusion is the spread of an innovation or an idea through a population in an area in such a way that the number of those influenced grows continuously larger, resulting in an expanding area of dissemination. So when religions move to a new location through missionaries or colonization, that is relocation diffusion. But as soon as it begins to gain more followers or expand, that is considered expansion diffusion. So remember that we can have two types of diffusion working on a single cultural trait over time, whether that trait is pizza or Christianity. But the fact that it expands doesn't tell us how it expands. So we have specific types of expansion diffusion to clarify how it grows continuously larger over time. Contagious diffusion is the rapid widespread diffusion of a feature or trend throughout a population by contact from person to person. Probably the best example, especially right now, is a virus like COVID-19. We have contact with a person who has it. And now we have it. And we spread it to people we come into contact with. And how do we try to stop it? By limiting contact. Tracing our contacts 
to try and stop the spread, stop the diffusion of this virus. As a historical example, smallpox came to the new world through relocation diffusion. But once it was here, it grew continuously larger, which is expansion diffusion. But how did it grow larger? Through contact, which spread the disease, so it spread through contagious diffusion. Hierarchical diffusion is the spread of a feature or trend from one key person or node of authority or power to other persons or places. When Michael Jordan signed an endorsement deal with Nike, the idea was that if Michael Jordan wore these shoes, then other people would want to be like Mike and Nike would sell lots of shoes. So professional athletes, celebrities, social media influencers are at the top of a hierarchy, at the top of a pyramid, and influence the people further down the pyramid. Starbucks spreads to areas that have enough people in closer proximity, so higher density, higher concentration. So they'll open stores in big cities and then smaller cities and maybe eventually small towns as long as they can meet the threshold for a Starbucks store. So their hierarchy is based on population density but also disposable income and accessibility, things like that. Walmart, on the other hand, began in a small rural area of Arkansas and spread to nearby small towns before making it big and eventually spreading to really big cities. So this would actually be labeled as a reverse hierarchical diffusion. It began at what would be the bottom of the hierarchy, rural areas, and spread to urban areas. The same went for hip hop and rap music. It began in inner city urban areas with a relatively small core of followers and eventually became the most popular genre of music in the world. Stimulus diffusion, our last form of expansion diffusion, is a form of diffusion in which a cultural adaptation is created as a result of the introduction of a cultural trait from another place. The, this form of diffusion is the spread of a major component with adaptations based on culture or circumstance. We talked about surfing as an example. Surfing diffuses and expands to streetscapes and snowscapes and becomes skateboarding and snowboarding. The idea of domesticating animals diffuses to areas with different animals, but the underlying concept of domestication remains. McDonald's is a great example of stimulus diffusion. McDonald's continues to expand, but not every country has the same food preferences, and there are cultural taboos to consider. So McDonald's makes cultural adaptations to their menu to meet local demands. McDonald's in India offer non-beef options to meet the cultural taboo against eating beef. McDonald's in Israel offer kosher restaurants. And that's just a couple of the many different menu examples that we could look at for McDonald's. And there are other factors that influence how cultural traits will diffuse. Notice how with contagious diffusion, it spreads from the hearth like ripples in water. People closer to the hearth receive the cultural trait earlier and faster than those farther from. The ripple effect is associated with friction of distance, which suggests that as distance increases, it becomes more difficult to interact with something, hence the word friction. Friction of distance explains the phenomenon of distance decay when it comes to the diffusion of cultural traits and practices. So as distance increases, diffusion or interaction more broadly, decreases. So distance can act as a barrier to diffusion, but there are other obstacles that can make diffusion more challenging. How connected an area is impacts diffusion. 
if an area is physically isolated without connections to the outside world in the form of trade or communication, then that serves as a barrier to diffusion. But if an area is well-connected with lots of trade, interaction, or communication, then diffusion might be easier. If an individual or community has greater access to the internet, that can enhance diffusion. This is a process called space-time compression. The more connected an area is, the easier and faster it is to diffuse something there. So the world seems functionally smaller because it takes less time or effort to spread something. That'll do it for tonight. I'll see you all back in class.